Academic Search Complete is a periodical database. It provides indexing information for many articles found in journals, magazines, and newspapers selected for college-level researchers by the developers of the database, a company called EBSCO. EBSCOhost is their collection of databases, and ISU subscribes to about 100 EBSCOhost databases. ISU students and faculty have access to this database and others through the ISU Library webpage. Many of the articles included in the database are available full text, although others are available through other ISU resources. As a general or multidisciplinary periodical database, it indexes almost 12,000 periodicals from most disciplines and professions. On the College Level Research Guide, click on the Find Articles tab and in the middle section there is a link to the database. If you are using a non-ISU computer, you will have to log in with your ISU identification number and last name. If you don't know this, log on to Bengo Web to find it. On the front page, there is a search box and many options to limit your search. You can use these but it is easier to limit with these facets while on the results page. So, type your search statement in the search box. On the results page, the search box is at the top and you can revise your search statement anytime. Also, notice the results are in chronological order with the most recent publications at the top. On the left, there are many options to refine your search results and these are called facets. For example, you can limit your results to full text, although many times materials that are available through ISU may not be full text in this database, so I don't recommend that. You can limit by publication date. Notice the number on the left is for the year of the oldest article in the results list, and on the right is the year for the newest source. Also note the number of results and the various source types included in the results list. This will be helpful for your assignment to locate a magazine, journal, and newspaper article for your topic. The facets continue down the left and you can narrow by subject. There are two different lists of subject headings. Don't worry about which is best. They are both helpful. For each of the facets, there are the six most frequently used headings when you open the facet with the number of sources that have that subject heading. You can click on any of them, although at this point you may only choose one. If you click on Show More, the complete list will appear. And the rest of the screen is shaded in gray. Check the headings that apply to your topic. Notice they are listed with the highest number of results at the top descending as you scroll down the list. You may choose several on this screen. It is very helpful to narrow your results to those relevant to your specific topic. Click on Update and the results list will be revised. In the Search History section, notice the facets that you used are listed and you can return to any search results by clicking on View Results. For each title in the results list, there is the author's name, the name of the periodical is in italics, the date of the issue, volume and issue number, and page span. Many articles have a DOI number, which is provided as well. Just below the citation are the subject headings assigned for the article. As you scroll down, notice the icons on the left of each title that denote the source type. Magazines are labeled periodicals, although technically that term applies to journals and newspapers as well. However, academic journals and newspapers are labeled appropriately. Occasionally, you may see an icon for a trade publication. They are magazines for a particular profession, usually for paraprofessionals and clerical staff. Many articles are available full text, and it is easy to see which ones are available in the database. The articles that have this orange Find It at ISU button are available through a print subscription, an e-journal subscription, or through another database that ISU subscribes to. On the right, each article has a small icon of a file folder with a magnifying glass. 
and if you hover over that with your mouse, a pop-up appears with the citation, subject headings, and the first part of the abstract. Consider it a very brief record about the article. Clicking on the detailed record in that box will take you to the same place as clicking on the title, which is the detailed record. Notice the citation, subject headings, and abstract are here, but it is easy to assess when everything on the article is on one screen. Also, notice the footnotes by the author's names. They correlate with the author affiliations below. You can go directly to the full text of the article, but I suggest you wait until you have decided which articles to use. On the right, there are options to print, email or save the record, and the citation help for several formats. To email, print, or save the record, click on the icon, and a form will appear above the title of the article. Complete the form, but notice the different formats of the record available. I suggest you use the detailed citation and abstract. Then you will have the subject headings and abstract in addition to the citation information. If the full text is available, it will be included as an attachment or as part of your email text but you should be able to assess the article with the detailed citation and abstract. Then, after you decide which articles are credible and relevant to your topic, you can move forward with your research. After sending, printing, or saving the record for the article, you will return to the complete record. To return to the results list, click on that option. When you are ready to access the full text of the article, click on the Full Text option or the orange Find It at ISU button, which will either take you to the full text or give you a list of databases that have access to the article. Follow the links and if you have any problems accessing your article, you may need to use an ISU library computer. Some subscriptions require that. As always, I am available if you would like my assistance, so please contact me.